Hi, I'm very nervous. I don't know why. I know all of you, but still, it's like, yeah, why do I have to speak? So yeah, welcome to our presentation. Uh, well, basically, our question was more how can dev and design inspire each other to re reach beyond the ordinary results? So I think it's quite clear that, yeah, we know how to sing. So <laughs> just one more. It's at the, at the end. It's the same. So yeah. So we, we will try to go through three kind of sections. Uh, the first one is we'll go through this accidental Noah, Noah Banga app. Uh, the other part will hopefully be a jam session. Uh, we'll try to do some live things, so kind of explain how the, this uh, inspire, inspire each other goes. And at the end, we'll try to find, uh, try to find the findings. Yeah, try to kind of see what we learned and how we did it. So our idea was to, in one hour, create a small app and then Six hours later, I came to Leon and said, uh, can you improve this? I give him a challenge to um, kind of improve an app to uh, see what can we improve. Um, and then he basically come with great design and I had a lot of m more work to do. <laughs> he challenged me back and I needed to implement some advanced uh, stuff in Flutter. So uh, this is the app that you probably saw already. It's a basic app. Um, built specially for Novabanga. It has two tabs, Friday and Saturday, and here you can see a list of all uh, activities today. You can see that it scrolls. You also have details, for example. <coughs> this talk was great. Um, on this screen, you can also see description uh, about presenter and so on. And like any serious app, <laughs> sorry? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like any serious app, it also has uh, dark mode, um, and it's <laughs> uh, and it's fully responsive. Um, and bonus is that with single platform, we can build on a desktop, mobile, um, web, and some other TV de devices that this no one. Code. Uh, this is a Flutter app, yes, and uh, this is Flutter code. For that. So, um, yeah, as you can see, Flutter is uh, Flutter. App is almost perfect. The only thing is that we notice is <laughs> sometimes if you don't have an activity planned or if there is some kind of bug in activity, you will see this unexpected state. <laughs> we forgot to add this state in the, in the, the build phase. So it's always something missing. Yeah, when, when you do a handoff, so designers do the, their design, and um, then we have a head off, a handoff meeting with a developer, and we go through all the designs, and I ask questions, he answers, and we discuss how things work. And, and we mostly design the happy place, the happy environment. Yeah, yeah. 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 So now we need to fix this, and as a developer, the, the, this is a great opportunity for me to, to do something on my own, to prepare my solution before I go back to the designer and tell him about this unexpected state. So I will fix this with active. So I, I created some empty state, which is just a basic thing that I know as, as a developer know best, so hopefully this will work. Yeah, so this is, this is my, the best time that I know, and um, let's try it if it works in dark mode, the most important thing. It does, and now when this is done, yeah, let's go back to slides. So these opportunities, these um, unexpected states, states are really um, what this talk is about. It's about um, you don't be afraid of them, don't be annoyed by them. It's time for you to go uh, to apply growth mindset and go beyond. Look for the, these opportunities. These opportunities might be errors, empty states, um, forum validations, loading or waiting times. Um, it's time for you as the developer to be creative, to express yourself and deliver more. Um, and the next thing is also important to share those findings with designer. So first thing is you need to help designers understand why this empty state or unexpected state occur to help him understand the technical limitations 
and also to give her or him the jump start. So as you can see here, I created this something and, and I'm not coming to him back to him empty handed. So he has something to, to build on. Um, that way we can make sure that designs are synchronized with technical solution and communication is going. It's important that communication between designer and uh, developer is always ongoing. Yeah, so what do you think, Leon? I love Travolta, so do, yeah. do we keep I think this? he did a great job. Do we keep I think this? we can, but uh, I think we also can create something more, let's say, professional. So it's not always just a, a fun stuff, but it can be also fun and professional. So, yeah, basically, I took the challenge and say, okay, you did something which looks great, so, but I can do better, of course. <laughs> so here we have uh, Figma files uh, where we created the design for this app. And it's basically, we have some elements there. So if I can, I am challenged, I can do something new. And basically I already have the elements and I can quite fastly create something that we can use. So I created a new frame, which I can try to use something to, to kind of elevate the design that you had. So I will just add the, uh, why am I shaking, Jesus, okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 of course I got it. Uh, so <laughs> Thank you. So basically, yeah, I just entered this. It's too small, right? Uh, it doesn't zoom. Zoom it. So, yeah, much easier. So I added header. So we have a page. There's a background. And there was something that I, while I was designing the, our values that we were having, I also had in mind that those things can be also used for smaller stuff. So we can definitely use something like this. Uh, and that's a challenge now, value. And I think it's good to, if we have a knowledge app, like knowledge sharing app that kind of presents the events of knowledge sharing, we definitely can inspire people if they encounter kind of an error or empty state, to, so kind of to challenge them. And maybe we need to add a text for that, which I will try to move now, why not? Let's do it like this. <laughs> the old way. <laughs> it's a shift. It's only four pixel shift. So, so yeah. basically our tactic is to stall as much as possible so we don't have hard questions today. Exactly. Less speaking, more working. So basically I just kind of went through the kind of relations with text. We kind of had a brainstorm and we kind of decided that we can add some text that saying like, you are challenged to share your knowledge next time. So kind of challenge the people, like maybe a fun or something, but yeah. And this is basically something that we created. So I don't know, Mate, what do you think? Do you I like it, it's much more professional than Travolta there. Um, but I have one concern. This, is, this looks great on, on light mode, but what about dark mode? Yes. I think dark mode is uh, something that we already have. I will also try. No, why it's not working? Yeah. That's the power of Figma. It's working. Okay. So, yeah, I have already done the dark state. So, the dark state. Jesus, dark design. <laughs> <laughs> I am in a dark place, apparently. <laughs> so, yeah, let's uh, maybe just, just change the, the background and see how it reacts. And. Okay, so here we see that, yeah, some things are missing. Uh, so maybe we can try to see if other color works on both backgrounds so the developer will not have too much trouble with this. It's not the right color, is it? Okay. So yeah, if we do that, we have the same color in both versions and then we need to add text and it's again not working. Yeah. Yeah, but... Yeah, yeah, talk, talk. Yeah, uh, so I, I would go one step further. And uh, as I know that Flutter is very capable of rendering um, great animations. Is it possible to uh, animate this? Maybe this will help you with your nervousness. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. <laughs> nice one. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, as, as uh, Figma also kind of offers some kind of animations, uh, but yeah, it's not really animation, but I can maybe try to see if I can show you how the animation could work and 
probably kind of make the challenge back to you, so you need to code. <laughs> yeah, it goes both ways. That, that's how the designers avoid their responsibility. Okay, let's uh, go with the yeah, white mode. God damn. So what I will create now, I will create some states. And here we have, oh yeah, that without text, never mind. So here we have four states. So if we imagine the animation, something could like change from screen to screen. And while I was designing those values, I also had in mind to be animated. So basically this challenge kind of challenge now, it should be something that you challenge, so balance it. So that's kind of the value was created. And with this, we can start doing some different uh, positions. Just put it back in the zero state and then another one on the other side. And then slide it on another and basically just copy paste to this, to the state zero. Nice. So here we have four states. So the idea is to, so that ball goes from one end and to another end in between it yeah. swings. Maybe for a better kind of understanding, I can start prototyping with Figma, which allows me to kind of connect the states between. So based on uh, kind of uh, actions, something happens. I will use just after delay and uh, smart animate to go from first screen to second screen. And I will repeat that a few yeah, times. So Figma is smart enough uh, to, to uh, have to transition between two states. Uh, so that's how we can do animation. Yeah, smart animate. It has a smart animate, so yeah. Uh, smigma. It's Smigma. <laughs> <laughs> so I used, yeah, uh, after delay, then move to a next and use kind of a smart magic animate. And what I, what I will do at, the, at the, the last one, I will turn it back to the first one. After wow. the last, smart, right? <laughs> and now let's see if this works. I didn't start the start point. Let's, let's see. First try. Wow. So. Here you go. You can see the movement, and now it's your uh, turn to start coding, <laughs> right? So I, I must admit, when uh, Leon first showed me this animation, I was a little bit skeptical, skeptical and afraid <laughs> because I didn't know how to make this in, <laughs> in Flutter. But let's challenge start. accepted. Yeah, challenge accepted. Uh, let's see how we can do this in code. So um, I already prepared some code because no one wants to be here all day. I prepared some custom animation, and it looks like this. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I can maybe show you how it's done. So basically, how the animation is done, we have this column. Uh, you, you can see here on the right, uh, we have column with two, two elements. One is custom animation, and one is text. And if we look into the custom animation, we can see that we have some kind of animation controller for two minutes, and then uh, it repeats itself, and it goes in reverse direction, so it does not jump to the start. And then we have some curved animation for, um, to specify to what curve the, our animation would look like, and then we have some math involved. Um, when it comes to slide animation, we would like to go from zero to one and back, and when it comes to swing, we would like to go from uh, 20 degrees to minus 20 degrees to just give this swing. And how does the flutter do this? We, it, it actually it's quite simple, even though it, not, it, not, it does not look at, at first glance. Uh, basically, we only need two animation builder. One is from moving left to right, and another one needs to just swinging, as you can see here at the, the top. So we are going to swing the whole comp composition, uh, either even bowl, bowl in this uh, semicircle. Um, yeah, and this is it. Yeah. Now. Um, Quick question: What makes the bowl go down the middle? <laughs> uh, 
Gravity. <laughs> no, it's actually, uh, so if I turn off this, uh, I can show you really quick, if I turn off this angle, and if I make it zero, you can just see the basic animation. And basically, the swing animation appears, uh, does this effect on, on the ball as well. Yeah. Awesome, but <laughs> I happen to know one more tool that uh, kind of um, evolves from Figma um, slide screen to Ripe. So maybe could we do this in Ripe? Let's see what we can do. Yeah, <laughs> basically yeah, it's Ripe. It's a, a animation, no, not animation. Yeah, it's a an fl flutter based animation editor, right? Yeah. So, uh, and it's not here. Oh, it's here. Okay. So yeah, it's definitely different than Figma, uh, but I said, okay, why not? Okay, it needs to load. And yeah, it, so the animate, any, animating stuff in Figma, it's quite simple because it's like a cartoon-like. You just make frames and then you kind of connect them and something happens in between and Figma kind of takes this smart thing and do something. But the animation, like proper animation, is a definitely a different approach because it's not one-to-one. -one. You have to kind of see where the pet goes and how it reacts and basically some physics at yeah. the end. I must em emphasize that it was also very hard to uh, debug the animation in Figma because I didn't know exact values. And it's really hard, uh, as you can imagine, it's really hard to uh, debug um, such things and even um, imagine how the animation would be done. So we use Rive for, for this. Yeah, so basically I already have the prepared uh, uh, graphics. I just insert it into Rife and I will, I will try now, now to animate the stuff. So what I did, so the first frame is here and I will try to do the, the last frame to be on the other side so it will go fast. Like this. So now we have this moving on. It's quite dull, so yeah, I guess we can do something more. Uh, and now I will try to do the interpolation. So here is the is in and is out. So it will basically go from slow to fast to slow. Good. Okay, it goes. So it's a bit more physical and more rea real uh, animation. And the next thing that I will do, and it was quite a, it was a really nice learning like of physics, so how to move this ball to like, you know, balance and I did many things and everything was wrong because then you need to go with a different approach and like do some, uh, it's called a, a, gu a guide, path guide, so basically you need to draw guides and everything, but then I say, okay, here I did, ball goes back, back left to le left to right and maybe I can just turn it around and let's see what happens. So what I will do now I will select the whole group and I will move it to one side and on the last frame I will move it to this frame. So let's see if it works. Oh, it's not moving, of course. You also need to add. Yeah, the last one. Oh, the first one. Ah, this is the last one. You. I think I changed the first one. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. Let's see if it works. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so it kind of does the thing. And also, I guess we need to use this is in and is out moment to be more easy. Let's make it a bit different to see if there is anything different. And yeah, just fast. Zoom. So yeah, basically we created this animation and as far as I know I think it's much easier for you to use this yeah. than do it from the scratch. Exactly and um, this way we transfer um, the need to do it customly from the developer back or together with the development to the designer also. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, now let's try to go back here. Uh, so this is details page. So instead of custom animation, we would like to have Rive. And yeah, this is animation imported from Rive. So what I did is I just exported the, the thing that Leon prepared and imported this in, uh, into the Rive. So is it the SVG? Uh, 
No, it's a no. RIV file, like so, yeah. As you can see here, uh, this code is, uh, uh, it con the export is in a RIV file, and what I just needed to do is uh, import it like an image. So uh, it's like Lottie, yeah. yeah, so what the RIV did, uh, they evaluate the Lottie animation uh -huh. into their product. And RIV also allows the state management, so basically I could put states inside that they then Matei can kind yeah. of operate with them. So for example, RIF also supports, supports uh, sensors or reading from sensors, so we could do this um, gyroscope sensor and mm -hmm. we would, like, uh, we would uh, move all from, nice. from this. Uh, Matei, uh, is there a difference between doing it uh, with code versus uh, embedding uh, hot files? Uh, like yeah, uh -huh, okay. <laughs> it's a great question because it's... Because I'm interested in like, is it a per performance issue or... I don't know Flutter that much because yeah. I suppose it's, uh, it's the same as with that, but um, yeah. This is a great question because we came to this, <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, from, from my perspective, I think it was uh, definitely a bit more time spent kind of with the designing in custom animation because I need to show on a different kind of levels how it sh could work. And on the other hand, the Rive was, yeah, maybe a longer learning curve, but definitely faster product because it was basically developed like this. So yeah, I tried this like three or four times, so now I'm faster. Uh, regarding the animation complexity, it was quite easy. It just took me time to do some states in Figma, but with Rive, I had to spend a bit more time and it was a bit more complex because I need to learn it's a different approach and everything like that. But I think the most the kind of difference were made in development. Yeah, so I, it took me two hours to create the first animation, custom animation. So first hour I did animation, it was um, great, but the second hour I spent it to make it responsive enough. So um, you, you can probably see that uh, it behaves with, uh, it ties to width so when you change the width, uh, it also shrinks and uh, so on. One question, uh, does uh, Rive works on GPU or CPU? Uh, they uh, build their own renderer. Uh -huh. So um, yeah, it's quite performant and it, I believe it works on GPU. GPU. Uh -huh. They can build games on it. Yeah. Uh, and what uh, compared, you know, uh, if you compare the GPU pressure of those two approaches, which one do you think that um, it's a, it's a uh, di quite dif um, difficult decision. Yeah, difficult, uh, yeah. yeah but probably Rife is optimized. Yeah, I, I would say Rife is more optimal than custom because in custom you can always make some errors and do some yeah, performance in issue. Custom you are actually using the native components. Yeah, that's the true. Components yeah. are built for the OS. That's it, it's a good question. We, yeah. we would that would be a good um, research. Uh, so when it comes to RIF implementation, it took me just one minute, but I, it takes me more time to download the actual uh, export and import it into the project. Uh, when it comes to complexity, I would say it's intermediate complexity with custom animations. You need to have some um, knowledge of math, some, some sense of animation, things like that. And it, when it comes to complexity with Rife, it's just like importing an image. Um, so when we did the um, animation in Figma, it was free, but it, it's kind of limited. Um, but when it comes to Rife, it's also free, but to some extent, you, you can see here that they, for, um, for a free tier, they do a watermark, mm -hmm. and their pricing tier starts at 25 euros per month per, per user. So it's, it's semi-free. Um, one minute, Alexander. We're uh, gonna prolong it, there was already some questions. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, and when it comes to interactive support, we, was, we already talked about it uh, in Figma or similar um, tools. It's kind of limited, but in, um, there is support in, in Rive. And yeah, I already told, told you about debugging. There is no debugging in Figma, or you need to do it manually, but in Rive you can go to execs step and see what's the value in here. Yeah, so the yeah. big question. The big question is definitely something that rise up a lot of times. So should designers code all developers design is like, ooh. Yeah, in some extent, yes. But 
no need really. So, but I think if we do discover together, it's beneficial for each of us to kind of understand the language that he's speaking and the language that I'm speaking. And curiosity, I think it's definitely something that drives us on. Uh, of course, speaking common language uh, helps. Uh, I guess we need to do stuff together uh, and challenge each other. And I think this is the main parts that are kind of something that we can all benefit for. Uh, some magic now. I think there are some tips, like really fast tips on co how to co on, on collaboration, basically. So most of the mistakes that kill collaboration happen with image-based prototypes. So just send me the image and I will see. No, you will not. And then the clarifying design decision. I think it's quite often misunderstood from the developer's perspective and from designer perspective of how much he understands me and in which kind of direction he understands me. So I think sharing those kind of knowledges is quite crucial. And again, it goes like educating engineers about the uh, user experience and vice versa. I think it's crucial. And can't predict every scenario in handoff. It's a fact, but yeah, we can change it. To make it better, I think we need to invite developers to participate in brainstorming or maybe in some design thinking sessions. Uh, definitely, we can make, well, with Figma, it's basically a streamlined process. As soon as I start working on Figma, designing, Matteo was able to see in life, basically, whatever I do. Yeah. Uh, understand each other, ah, yeah, that's more of a... So, um, yeah, as we already mentioned, understand each other's role and know where the limits are and also always start small. So we started with some still image and then progressed from that. It's much easier to progress from something small than just build everything to, uh, at once and then discuss if it's okay or not. Yeah, and the last thing is what is in it for stakeholders, right? Um, they, they are the one paying it. So these things bring additional value to the project um, and with custom animation and stuff like this, you really go beyond and provide additional value. Um, is it worth it? As we can saw, um, it took us really small amount of time to produce something greater than a still image. And uh, in our opinion, it's worth it. Um, it's also inclusive progress. Uh, process. Uh, process, basically, uh, what I said before with Figma, it's, it's always good to have people around you, like seeing how you work, when you work, not when you work, but how you work, maybe better. <laughs> But yeah, I think it's always good to have like inclusive process to see, to understand what's, what's needed to do some things from the developer perspective and from the others. It's definitely easier to understand for a lot of people if there's an image or a kind of a motion image to kind of connect or working prototype so you can click on it. And I think with something creating together and make it visual, it creates a lot of opportunity to find bugs and errors even before it's developed. So I think this is something that can help us all. Yeah, and here are the links for, for all the results if you're interested in some questions. Let's go back to see. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this way. I actually already have a question for you too. Uh, be I'm assuming this is your first time really collaborating this closely on a project together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now I'm curious, since you talk about challenge challenging each other and going beyond, what is something each of you learned, whether it was design or anything through the application, the software you're using, or just working together that you it's took away from this? It's pain in the ass. No, <laughs> no, 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 not at all. Well, I, I, I think it was something really cool was that, uh, yeah, we, we know each other kind of, but like colleagues, we've met before, but yeah, it was really the understanding of his thoughts and basically you approached me and said, okay, I need some, some, would you like to do it? So yeah, basically it was a, uh, yeah, it, never judge people if you don't know them. I guess that was, the <laughs> no, not that I judged. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, for me, it was a really learning experience. I uh, tried some new technologies that I didn't do before and I didn't have time to do it. So, and with help with, uh, with Leon, we did it together, so I, I was happy to get to be with that event. It was definitely a challenge to me to start, like, it was a pain for me to start animating. It's, yeah, it's a different world, so, yeah, it was a really nice experience. But you had growth mindset and you did it. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyone have any other questions? Tia, okay. Uh, I don't have a question, but I think you can answer. Okay. Uh, because I think 
think it's uh, an opportunity for both of them to get the sticker. Right. Please stick it, stick it on them. That <laughs> sounds a little strange, but I will do that. Yeah, stick it on them. <laughs> stick it. And for those of you who can't see, it says, thank you for teaching me new things. Aw, I think you. Thank you. Deserve. Where should we put it? <laughs> Flat out. All right. I'm a senior now. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I guess with uh, all the recent developments in the generative AI uh, space, there have been a lot of kind of what you see is what you get to popping up that can actually sort of generate viable products. So how do you guys think that tools like that are going to uh, kind of impact this type of developer-designer um, collaboration, considering that the designer now can kind of come up with more than just a prototype. Well, those uh, movies are made with AI, so we don't know how to sing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, more seriously, um, it probably brings the um, developers and designers more closely together since uh, they can get prototype uh, quicker. And uh, yeah, it's, it's always easier to start with something that you already have than starting from scratch. So it's definitely an improvement. Yeah, uh, it, it's always like uh, the question of design is now the AI came and you will be left out of the job, right? So I don't know. It, it's still uh, supposed to be AI. So it's far away what I have in my head. So. Yeah, it's from some, some parts can go further and faster, but the results are really like average. So yeah. going beyond average, I think we'll still need a lot of human power. Uh, but for me personally, it's a very, very nice feature like AI in general to kick off something, share the, share the kind of thoughts with somebody that I don't know <laughs> and it's computer, Jesus. But yeah, it's, it gives you feedback, you know? So if you don't have somebody to talk to, it's a really nice feedback. It's a really nice discovery product maybe to just like, yeah, I think most of the kickoff or some parts where you are really not knowledgeable, like writing copyright text, you know? Yeah, I, I think it's a very beneficial, but it's, it has a dark side for sure. And, and it's, it has limits. Yeah, for now. Yeah, Chris. designer in process to navigate yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. navigate yeah. but it's quite uh, easy to be distracted with all this AI knowledge like not uh, not taking um, how I say, uh, you don't see the soul because it's so good yeah, yeah it's soulless it just it's you know, soulless but it's it just, amazing you know instruction after instruction but then you have to take over from there. Yeah, yeah. kind of, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think this is like a perfect description of AI. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is, it is. The more you look at it, the more yeah. freaked out you get. It works, but you know. I might have nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you've uh, you've done this together. You know each other well, right? You know, yeah, how to collaborate with each other. How would you suggest? So us being here and now uh, listening to this, if um, if there's only one from either the developer or designer who is ready uh, to engage in this kind of communication and back and forth work, how would you? What's your advice? And how would you? Um, kind of motivate the other, whereas that is the designer or the developer, to collaborate with you in such a way? So the, the easiest way to get designers' attention is to make everything ugly, <laughs> <laughs> and they will come. <laughs> <laughs> but no, on no, what, uh, the other way around. No, no, definitely. I think you, 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 you spotted well. It's, it's, yeah, if there is really something, uh, if there's a developer using uh, 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 what's the Comic Sans, it's like, can I die? <laughs> Give it to me. So yeah, it's definitely the point of let's say ugliness or maybe, yeah, it definitely tricks ours. Uh, it triggers us. 
Uh, but I think on the other hand, I think it's a lot of, about the process, how you set up the project. So who are the people? Why are the people there? So it's not really, there's no magic stick, but I guess, yeah, I think challenging each other, like trying, you know, if you're, if you're just silent there, yeah, I think it was a lot of talked about that with, before in the senior, senior kind of panel. I think, yeah, speak up and then see, nothing can go wrong. Maybe you can lose a job, but not really. Yeah, but uh, also keep communication going. Um, don't, don't stop it when the, you receive the designs, don't stop communicate, communicating with the designer. Always ask about thoughts, how to do this. Even though you know the answer, just ask him anyway. Maybe you get some new ideas anyway. Maybe what helped me much was this knowledge sharing between domains. I think as much as I knew about developers, as much as I could understand them, the better I could kind of approach them and see how they think and how they react on some. I guess it's much harder or easier for the developer to come for a designer. It really depends on the process and the team and environment that you're in. Yeah. Because yeah, we can be quite an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Uh, okay, I think we have one more question left, which was you. Hello. So what um, what you managed to do here was to to uh, have very tight feedback loops and and and, and start together and uh, set a common goal together, um, and that is I suppose at least to my experience it's it's rarer that you get these kinds of interactions, and it's usually the um, like the, the 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 handoff approach. So how do you see that in um, in in maybe in real life? How do, how is that working out? Have are uh, has the trend moved uh, more towards having this kind of like more of a fluid cooperation, or is is it still hard for f finding the right spot for de for designers, p particularly to get into the development process as an, as equal partners? It was quite funny. I just kind of realized some time ago that, that the company that I work for it's. It's a medical company. It's a really like a old dinosaur company, like like very water, waterfall and everything. so they're really old school. Uh, but we managed so what we managed a small thing, and the small thing is that I kind of am allowed to join every meeting that exists. So I I kind of weekly I join the the front end forum. Mm -hmm. I weekly communicate through some con connections, meetings, events with directly with developers. So. Yeah, I, I think this understanding of bridges between functions and roles, I think it's crucial for that. And if it happens in our old school approach company, I think it definitely is happening around. And I think with the technologies like AI maybe, I can understand or create something that Matei could do it, but I can do it on my own and then I can present it to Matei and say, look, this is what I did. Can you help me on that? So I think it's always a, everybody can make a step in, like approaching people, like being there for them, just listening. And yeah, so I think it's not so hard, but sometimes there are very silos, the environments, and it's definitely hard to grow, go through the outside the silos and kind of approach them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, and I think the design is always kind of a bit detached yeah. from everything because we're a special species, mm -hmm. but we're not. We're just the developers of design. So I think we listen and listen the same things and do the same things as every developer does. We go inside the architecture, we go inside the experience, how the things will work, how the things will crash. So yeah, but we just do it with design, not with code, so. Yeah. Yeah. I can only speak from my experience. So what I'm trying to do is to connect with the designer, not on, on this official level, but on more unofficial, I try to, um, be more um, open to him, talk to him a little bit more, and that that way I can build this trust between me and, and he or her. He or her? Depends. <laughs> 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 Undecisive.
All right. Well, that concludes your talk. But before I say something, before we say thank you and give them another round of applause, I just want to say I think we all came for a presentation, but we didn't expect a comedy show. <laughs> so thank you for all the impromptu laughs. Uh, I think my cheeks and my muscles hurt, so thank you again. But also thank you for, I think, teaching all of us something new here and the time and effort you put in. And uh, again, congrats on doing it all. So I think they deserve a very big round of applause. Thank you.